All right guys, welcome back to another video. I finally got the garage all set up and ready to do some product videos. So the number one most requested video that you guys have been asking for is a full breakdown on this year's 2023 sled build. So in this video, we're gonna go over every little thing that's on this sled, everything that's been done to this sled, and this is just gonna be a full in detail video of my favorite sled to date. So let's get into it. So here we have Neo. How'd I get the name Neo? It's a Matrix chassis. If you've ever seen the movie, The Matrix, Neo is the main character. And plus the color scheme here, it's like all neon colors. So it's like neon, Neo, I don't know. I couldn't think of anything else. So from the factory, this sled is a 2023 Polaris Chaos Slash Boost with a 155 inch Series 8 track. All right, so first let's go over performance. So this year, Boondocker came out with an intercooler for the Patriot Boost, which allows the sled to be turned up way more than you can turn up a sled without an intercooler. The intercooler's kind of tucked up in there so you can't really see it. Um, so I'll throw in a clip of when I had the sled all torn apart when I was trying to change a throttle cable because to change the throttle cable, you gotta take the entire snowmobile down to a bucket of nuts and bolts pretty much. So what goes hand in hand with the intercooler is Voke tuning. So Boondocker works with Voke and they fine tune these things to make them run extremely well. And I've been working with Voke for the last four or five years probably. And normally I would stay on pump gas tunes and you know just turn it up a little bit and it's still like the, the Patriot Boost alone from the factory rips and then you put a little tune on it even just the pump gas tune it's insane that's what lieutenant dan had my prior sled was just a uh, was just a voke tune on top of the the stock patriot boost which made it run really well but eric from voke was talking about high horsepower tunes and all the stuff that's uh available for this new patriot boost now with the intercooler um, and I've always been hesitant to go to race gas, but this year I was like, you know what, now that I'm out here living in the mountains, um, it's easier to just go get fuel and keep it in my garage and we're not traveling around worrying about finding an airport in some random town. So I'm like, you know what, let's do it. So this sled is turned up on the intercooled tune from Voke, which is running around 12 pounds of boost. This is the most fun sled I've ever ridden. And even comparing this to Lieutenant Dan is night and day difference when you add this much power. It's, it's not for everybody, um, but if you're wanting big horsepower and you're wanting this sled to flip over backwards on you at the blink of an eye, the Boondocker intercooler kit and the Voke tuning is what you'll want. Uh, another performance thing is the Boondocker Talon clutching. So uh, Boondockers really been fine tuning their clutching over the last couple years. And I was able to go out with some of the guys at Boondocker earlier this season and ride my sled stock and then throw in the clutching to see like the performance gain each step of the way. And just adding the clutching, it just feels like it woke the sled up. So the Boondocker clutching comes with little capsules that you can put in. So it's super easy to adjust. If you need to go higher or lower RPM, you just throw in the next size bigger capsule, screw it in all the way. I don't consider myself a mechanic. I mean, I can do all the basic stuff on a snowmobile, but you know, when you see a clutch kit full of screws and uh, all these magnets and all this other stuff, I'm just like, you know what? I just want it plain and simple. Yes, I want the performance gains, um, but I really like the capsule system because you just, you just screw it in and you're done. If you need to go up or down, you just put in the next size capsule. So coming over to the clutch side, um, another cool thing about these Boondocker weights is it actually shows the size right on the edge. So you can see what size you have in there without actually taking it out. So with the, with the uh, intercooled tune and everything, you kind of have to throw in some heavier weights 
So I have 75s there with, I believe, a 10 cap, size 10 capsule. And this setup is, it is so dialed. I, I wouldn't change a thing on it. And uh, if you're looking at doing some clutching or tuning or anything related to performance and you need some help, feel free to leave a comment and I'll help you as best as I can or get you pointed to the right guy at Boondocker or Vogue who can help you dial in your sled to make it run like a pissed off gorilla. Oh, oh man. All right, and then to finish it all off, I have the Boondocker Tunnel Exit Deep Snow Exhaust. So yes, you have to cut a hole in your tunnel. Is it worth it? Absolutely. So it comes with a blocker plate down in there where your stock exit used to go. And instead it reroutes the exhaust back through here and into the inner circle of your track. Why is this helpful? Because when you're on a right-hand side hill, that outlet right there is getting plugged up with snow, which leads to something called powder bog. If you don't know what that is, um, you'll experience it on, especially on turbo sleds. And so this just avoids the powder bog. So you always have that immediate power that you want in a turbo. Um, some, I get a lot of comments on TikTok asking how loud it is. Um, this setup with the tunnel exit is a little bit louder than stock. Um, it just kind of adds a nice little raspy sound, but it's not anything obnoxious. I know some of the trail guys like their, their stuff really loud. Um, but most mountain guys, at least a lot of the guys that I ride with, having an extremely loud snowmobile in the mountains is not cool, especially when you're the guy pulling on the ski, getting him unstuck, and it's just piercing your eardrums with, with loud noise. I'd much rather listen to, to turbo noises and, and spooling and whistles and all that kind of stuff. And the most important question, yes, it is cooker compatible, hot dogger compatible, whatever you call it, muff pot got to have the hot food on the mountain. I know there's a lot of non-snowmobilers that watch my videos um, for like tubing and the other outdoor adventures and whatnot. So if you don't know what a, what a muff pot is, um, it's basically a little container that you put food in, like leftovers, whatever you want, and the exhaust cooks it and makes it hot. Um, you just put it in the morning, ride until about lunchtime, and then you'll start to smell your food, open up your side panel, pop it out, and you got a hot meal on the mountain, which is, uh, it's like, I, I don't even know how to explain how awesome <laughs> a hot meal is on the mountain. Like, uh, I'm, I'm a big muff pot guy, let's just say that. All right, so next let's go over the suspension setup. So starting with the A-arms, these are the Raptor 37R Hellfire Billet A-arms. They're 37 inches wide, and it's actually a two-piece upper A-arm and a three-piece lower A-arm has higher clearance, but it still maintains the same ride height and handling characteristics. Solid front end, good looking. I mean, you can't beat the look of billet. Um, super happy with those this year. And then touching on suspension, this year was the first year of me running the Raptor Kinetic Series suspension on the front and rear. I feel like there's a common misconception of people thinking that the only people that need Aftermarket suspension is people who do big jumps, uh, but I would say I think suspension is super important for any rider uh, just because one of the main things I realized this year is after riding, um, like throughout the day, these shocks just soak up so much of the bumps and old crusty like trails from before ultimately giving you way less fatigue at the end of the day. I still felt super energized at the end of the day and ready to keep riding. Um, I feel like with a stock suspension, you just feel all of those lumps and bumps throughout your day of riding so much more and you're putting in so much like energy and effort to like to maintain the handling of your sled um, as you're doing that. Whereas with the Raptor shocks, it just kind of soaks everything up and it just feels so much more smooth. They're also super easy to adjust on the fly. So if you're gonna be jumping for a while, you can turn up the, the stiffness. Um, if you like your ride a little more soft, you can turn it down super easily. And really you don't even have to mess with it a whole lot if you don't want to. The suspension comes kind of set up right out of the box and I didn't steer too far away from how it was set up when I opened the box. But yeah, it made a huge difference 
I'll definitely be running Raptor shocks uh, for the years to come. If you're wanting to ride longer without being so fatigued at the end of the day, do yourself a favor, look into some Raptor shocks. I mean, even if that's the only mod you do on your sled, your sled's just gonna handle so much more smoothly and, uh, and you're gonna love it. All right, so next thing I wanna talk about is bar setup. This year, I went with the Kyber SDG, small diameter grip handlebars. These were a super strong and super comfortable setup. Um, I actually rolled this sled over a boulder in Togedy, which is actually why this grip is different because I obviously messed up the grip and uh, they didn't have the teal grips in stock anymore, so I went with the next closest color. And so Kyber makes all kinds of trick parts. As you can see, I have the throttle block, a couple scratches on that from the boulder. And with this style of throttle block, you don't have to worry about ice getting into your throttle and giving you cruise control when you don't want it. I also added the K1 bar pad, the brake reservoir cover, so you don't smash open your brake reservoir and lose all your fluids. Then we got the shorty brake lever. This is super comfortable for one finger on the brake. I usually use my pointer finger. Some guys use their middle finger. Either works great. It's just a super comfortable. It's close to the bar, easy to pull, and it's beautiful billet. So then I got the riser right here. This is the 75 millimeter. This is what Eli at Kyber recommended to start out with because this is similar to the Polaris low bar, which is what I'm used to. And I think I'm gonna stick with it because it's a really comfortable height for me. Um, especially if you like the Polaris low bars, I would go with the 7.5 to start out with. And then this bracket down here is a switch relocate bar, which relocates your reverse button along with your kill switch, puts it in a nice uh, hidden position and keeps the look of your bars more of a clean looking setup. And the last thing that Kyber has on the sled, not on the bars, is a billet ice scratcher holder. So instead of scratching up your rails, it just rests on that little holder. Nice clean setup, also a billet. All right, next let's go over protection. So Backwoods BMP has been my go-to for the last couple years uh, for strong front and rear bumpers. And they're also getting into all kinds of other things, which we'll go over here in a little bit. Front bumper. They come custom powder coated. They're super strong, super easy to put on and really protects your sled. I feel like front bumper is one of the most important things to have on a sled just because us mountain riders tend to hit a lot of trees. And as you can see, <laughs> got a little piece of log shoved in there. Just, uh, just doing its job, you know? So coming around back to the rear bumper, uh, it's got a nice little arc over the tail light so it's easy to grab onto. Uh, works as a wheelie bar if you need to and then it also comes up and braces the majority of the tunnel also in custom powder coating and then uh, these back pieces come like a textured black which is uh, really nice really easy to grab onto gives you some good grip then down here we have the backwoods bmp rail braces these are the stock polaris rails they're just powder coated and then uh, then the backwoods bmp rail brace just rivets right into that existing rail. I think it gives a nice little two-tone look and you can't have enough rail protection. All right, another important question is, Justin, how did your sled get so beautiful? Well, let me tell you. This is an Arctic Effects graphics wrap. I've been working with these guys for so many years and their graphics are just such good quality. This is the Justin Ponzer signature wrap called Splice. So on their website, I think it's labeled Ponzer Splice. Um, so it's one that me and Jordan from Arctic FX kind of came up with together. Um, I kind of wanted something that looked fast and aggressive, but still wanted some mountains in it. You can order this wrap without, the, without all the logos if you don't want them. You can get it in any different finish. They have matte finish. They have, uh, this is the glossy finish with halo flakes. So it's got like multicolored metallic flakes in it. Uh, and then they, they have a new chrome finish, which is super cool. Uh, you can go on their website and customize, customize the colors, customize uh, whichever design you want. And there's unlimited options of how you can make this thing look. I feel like a wrap is really what makes sleds different. This sled came stock pretty much all black and a wrap can really give it some character and nobody likes to look like everybody else. What else? We got the 7S display. 
comes stock with all the turbo sleds from Polaris. You can track all your buddies, see where they're at so you don't get lost. Then we got the Seco seat cover. So this is actually just a cover. I get a lot of questions if this is an aftermarket seat or not. Nope, it's just a cover. You just take the seat off, put this on, staple it to the bottom, and you can customize all these little stripes, uh, kind of make it match your sled. And these are really grippy and they're really durable. I tend to rip the stock seat with my boot a lot when I'm hopping over and uh, I haven't, you can stand right on this and um, doesn't really, it takes a, takes a good beating. And I get a lot of questions about my camera box. Um, obviously filming is really important when I'm out snowmobiling. So I custom made this uh, Pelican box to fit with the Polaris lock and ride um, system that you're probably familiar with if you have a matrix. So what I had to do is buy a Polaris tunnel bag to get the hardware and then I mounted the hardware to this box. So at the end of the day, when I'm done filming, just grab these tabs, it slides right off. I can bring it in the house, unload the footage, put it back on, locks right in, super easy. I've had a lot of camera guys ask me how I, how I set it up and um, I'll build one for them sometimes or walk, talk them through how I made it. And then on the inside, these are little, you gotta push this in to open it up. It's kind of a little safety thing. Um, and then I went and got the, uh, I think it's called Trek Pack divider system that you can buy on Pelican's website when you buy the case. So you can either get the pick apart foam um, which I've had in the past, but this is a really nice customizable setup. So I have like a lens in here, my camera with the long lens goes in here. Uh, these are tool bags. And then I put my drone on top here. Uh, we got some zip ties and clutching stuff, but you can really fit a lot in there and it keeps the camera nice and uh, protected. So that's pretty much it. This is my intercooled Patriot Boost Voke tuned sled build on 100 low lead, 100% race gas, 12 pounds of boost. Um, the thing is so fun to ride. I ordered the same exact sled for 2024, except uh, the only difference is I got the new 325 track. Um, so it's a really big lugged track and i um, super excited to try that out in the deep powder out here in Idaho. So this sled will actually be for sale after hay days in September. So if you're interested, shoot me a message. If you have any other questions about the sled build or any other parts, if you want my opinion or my advice, let me know in the comments and let me know what you wanna see in the next video. This was a highly requested video. You guys wanted me to do a full walk around video on the sled, so let me know. Now I got my, uh, my, pro my video production garage set up, so it's time to make some videos. If you like this video, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. Drop a like, drop a comment. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you on the snow. Yeah.